In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at these current conditions, and as always, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern. We have a whole lot going on. Uh, we still have this storm system down here in the south central United States, but we can see this has kind of moved up. Yesterday, I would say this was located mostly around central Texas, uh, so this has began to take its kind of no northern curve because it headed south. It just kept on digging south, and now it's finally kind of turned to where it's uh just now curving a little bit northward. Uh, usually when we see storms move in through the northwest, like let's say this one that's about to move in, usually we see it curve very much so further northward uh, than this one has. But this one abnormally has kind of just kept on going south. Uh, so it's taking a little bit of an unusual track. Now this storm is going to expand greatly, but it's going to um, send precipitation in all directions here, kind of through the eastern United States. And everywhere uh, in the eastern United States will feel impacts from this low to some extent as it raises northward. Uh, I would say the actual trajectory of the storm is going to be something like this. And we will see a lot of impacts everywhere else, basically. Now, there's not a whole lot going on west of the plains, as we can see. So we're not really going to touch on that. We do have a low, uh, a pretty broad low pressure system in here. And we will talk about that on the model guidance, but for now we're not going to talk about it on the current conditions because there is really no current conditions. Uh, now we can see, uh, first off in my opinion, I think the, the pressure here is a little bit off. I, I, I think we're seeing the low somewhere uh, up here in, in the lowest of the geopotential height. Uh, and I think this makes sense. I'll, I'll pause it at the, let's, let's take it all the way. Um, I, I think the low is somewhere in here. And what we're seeing is, uh, a, or perhaps around here, uh, where the heart of the precipitation is. And then the warm front is something like this. Cold front is underneath. I think this is what we're seeing. So we have this warm air uh, heading in kind of outside of this warm front and kind of just behind it. And then the cold air is sweeping in behind. And the cold front here is where we're seeming the worst of the conditions, actually, the worst of the storminess. Uh, as you can see, we have a pretty decent line of thunderstorms developing here across Louisiana and Mississippi. And this is mostly due to that cold front. Um, we also have more persistent, heavier, moderate to heavy precipitation in here due to the warm front. But usually this does not feature thunderstorms or severe weather with it, the warm front side of things. And we have an occluded front as well on the very northern edge of the storm. And that's probably more like where all of this precipitation is happening, this very large area of heavier precipitation. We can see some areas out ahead of the cold front featuring some thunderstorms near Brent, Florida, and very close to Mobile, Alabama as well. Uh, so in general, we're seeing a lot of areas seeing some thunderstorms come on shore, though, behind this warm front, which is pretty, pretty darn typical, I'd say. Uh, Florida now, we do have some storms moving from east to west here. Uh, onshore of the east coast of Florida for now. These could move across into the central and even western regions of the state, but this is happening all the way south towards the Keys and all the way northward toward, towards Jacksonville and everywhere in between. So this is a, a phenomenon that's actually impacting pretty much everywhere in Florida at this point. As we move a little bit northward, we can see some lighter showers around for the Carolinas primarily, uh, but could impact Georgia or uh, Virginia that cannot be ruled out either. Let's see if there's anything else. There's really not. We have some ridging and in, in warmer weather here kind of beginning to move in for the eastern United States. We can see these geopotential height lines moving northward. If you'll uh, take note of that, they're moving northward here in the eastern United States, indicating warmer and war warmer weather moving in. We have plenty of high pressure being indicated along the eastern United States as well. All of this indicating a trough in the west, ridge in the east pattern here uh, with warmer air moving in this way and cooler stormier weather moving down through the west so we'll talk about that on the model guidance in just a moment now here we are taking a look at the upcoming storminess we can see our storm down here we can see our upcoming storm up here and really not a whole a whole lot else going on notice how this just begins to expand we see some of it moving northward some of it heading through the central regions and some of it heading towards the southeast we can see it really expanding um, and this continues to expand until it's basically bringing storminess to a whole lot of the eastern United States there. From Florida and Georgia and northward through the Carolinas into the mid-Atlantic even, parts of the northeast seeing some impacts, and especially there in the Ohio Valley we're seeing some of those impacts also. 
We do see some storminess up here in the northwest, but this low is primarily located up there in Canada, which means that only the very far northwestern regions are seeing precipitation from this one, and that's on November 1st, which will be a Tuesday. We do see, however, that this low does eventually transfer southward towards Montana and Idaho right there on the border, very tall mountains in that region, and this does start to bring a very major trough uh, with it. Uh, so we're probably seeing um, a lot of snowfall, not probably, we are seeing that here actually uh, for California, Nevada, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Montana there. We're seeing plenty of that snowfall. We do see uh, some storminess for a couple of regions in the east still, the northeast and portions of the south central United States seeing some precipitation Tuesday into Wednesday, first into the second of November. By the time we're reaching Thursday, November 3rd here, uh, we do see further below normal temperatures moving into the west and we see this big time Rocky Mountain snowstorm. More lows impacting the western regions of Canada and this is just continuing to dive down and bring more and more snowfall. Even areas down here from New Mexico potentially seeing some snowfall as a strong low develops. We do see a bit of a frontal boundary in here bringing some precipitation for Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas and some surrounding states as well. We still see the snowfall up there in the northwest by the 6th of November. Uh, and we see by the end of the model run here, which will be Tuesday the 8th, we do see another storm system moving into the northwest, bringing more snowfall to California, Nevada, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Montana there. Definitely plenty of snowfall going to be picked up here on the model guidance. Firstly, let's take a look at the total precipitation, though. And in the white regions, we're expecting practically no precipitation. Your grays will be a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens will be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues will be half an inch to an inch. Your yellows will be an inch to two inches. Your reds will be two to five inches. And then your brown regions will be five to ten inches of precipitation. Definitely a large amount there for California, Oregon, and Washington. And then also down there for Texas, we're seeing quite a bit as well, especially along the coast near Houston. Um, definitely seeing quite a bit. Now, total snowfall here, not surprisingly, we are seeing a ton out west. In your grays, you'll be seeing a dusting, if anything. Blues being two to six inches of snowfall. Purples will be six to ten. Pinks, ten to twenty. Your pastel blue is going to be 20 to 30 inches of snowfall. And then your pastel pinks and purples within the blues that are within the pink. I know it's kind of confusing, but those pinks within the pinks uh, are going to be your 30 to 48 inches plus. I can tell you at the bottom of the screen, bottom right hand corner of your screen, better yet, we can see a max of 148.7 inches, which would be a whole lot to say the least. So definitely picking up on these snowfall amounts. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, and you can tell where all the cold weather is going to be just by looking at this. The west is where it'll be. The west and the north, obviously, but definitely the west as opposed to the east. Now, as far as the temperature pattern, let's just watch it. There's not a whole lot to go over. Uh, we are pretty mild across the board. A little too far there. Across the board here through November 1st, pretty mild from coast to coast. But we do start to see after the first, right around the first being the benchmark, we see the second and the third of November featuring far below normal temperatures out here in the west, which will be a negative PNA. This is a bubble of cold air that forces all the warm air to move around this region into the eastern half or eastern two-thirds of the nation. And this has been what's driving the more mild pattern out east. The opposite of this would drive in a much more ferociously cold pattern, I would say, in the east. If we got the opposite of this, which it doesn't appear like it's going to happen anytime soon, because here's the end of the model run, and we see more deep cold air moving in for the West. Perhaps this will be wrong, but we see this negative PNA holding on at least through the 8th on this model run, if all of this stays true, and this would continue to bring above normal temperatures for the East. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. We do upload every single day, and we are going to figure out when this pattern is going to change. I know I've been saying this every single day. We will eventually figure it out. It just seems like this is going to be a stubbornly long pattern that we're stuck like this. But just like any old pattern in the weather, it will eventually flip. So we just have to wait and see. We will be the first to tell you guys uh, when we do see signs of that happening. So be sure to tune in daily. Subscribe if you want to make sure you see those in your subscription box. Like the video if you did enjoy it. And leave a comment down below with your thoughts. And I will see you guys in the next video.